This question manages to fuck people up because when you learn about Lyme disease, the erythema chronica migrans, you expect there to be a target rash. Okay, that's what you read. And then you get an image like this on the exam. It's like, oh shit, like it's not a target rash. It's just a circular rash, right? This is still erythema chronica migrans. Uh, it'll become a target appearing rash, but this is what the USMLE is gonna do. And then, so they'll show you a rash like this, just a, just a circular rash that's not a target. And then they'll often have a second image next to it of a Bell palsy where, and I, I described that in the kid here, I didn't show the image because of, you know, I don't know, using actual people's faces, children's faces with YouTube and their fucking rules and stuff. Uh, but the point is they'll often show you a second image of like an eight year old or a 10 year old where you can see half the face isn't moving with the smile. And that's your Bell palsy rather than them, rather than them actually explicating it in the vignette like I did. So this is an easy diagnosis of Lyme disease, not hard so far. Borrelia burgdorferi, it's a spirochete. Okay, a spirochete refers to uh, a taxonomy of bacteria that generally have a spiral shaped appearance under dark field microscopy. Okay, syphilis is one of them. It's not the answer here. Okay, we're looking for an organism that's similar um, in terms of it being a spirochete. That's what this means. Taxonomically, morphologically uh, similar means we're looking for another spirochete. And Yes, syphilis, treponema pallidum would be a classic one. Okay, that's that's also very high yield, but that's uh, not what we're assessing here. So let's just go through our answer choices. Uh, babesiosis, wrong fucking answer. So babesia is a protozoan, which is a unicellular eukaryote. Babesia, what you need to know for US simile is that it's spread by Ixodes tick, same as Lyme disease. Um, so Lyme disease, Borrelia burgdorferi, Babesia, Ehrlichiosis, Anaplasma, these four organisms are spread by Ixodes tick. They like to ask that as well. There's many versions of this question. I could have given you the same fucking question, said which is spread by the same vector, Ixodes tick, and the answer could have been Babesia or Ehrlichia. Obviously, uh, both of these are correct, but they wouldn't both be listed uh, for that type of question. Um, but Babesia is going to present with a malaria-like hemolytic condition. However, the patient has not left the United States. That's very fucking important because uh, they will tell you that the patient has hemolysis. They might show you the Maltese crosses or the ring forms on a blood smear. And malaria, wrong fucking answer. That's if the patient went to Africa. Babesia, the patient has not left the United States, okay? So it's really easy to confuse, even though what I'm saying, it it just it sounds common sense. Now, Babesia, a very low yield detail, but if you want your like 270 plus, would be that patients who have splenectomy, obviously susceptibility to encapsulate organisms like strep pneumo, haemophilus influenza type B, naysayer meningitis. But for one reason or another, there is also susceptibility to Babesia. I've seen like one NBME question where they mentioned Babesia in a patient who had splenectomy. And I was like, okay, like the detail actually is on the NBME somewhere. So it's not just like this uh, obscure factoid that you never uh, will never see. Ehrlichiosis. So Ehrlichia chafinsis is a bacterium that will present similarly to Lyme disease with a rash, they'll tell you there's a 25 year old male who was sleeping with his dog and there was a tick found on the dog and the guy has a rash and you're like, oh, this like this seems like Lyme disease. But they'll throw in a detail that uh, the phagocytes of the patient have within them berry cluster organisms or morulae, okay? M-O-R-U-L-A-E, morulae or berry cluster organisms refers to Ehrlichia. So it's just going to be a Lyme disease-like vignette with morule or very cluster organisms within macrophages. Um, very low yield Ehrlichia, okay? Just once again, Ehrlichia and Babesia are spread by Ixodes tick, same as Lyme disease and anaplasma. Leptospirosis, okay? So Leptospira interrogans, this is the correct answer. This is a spirochete, okay? It's actually ice pick in appearance. We said spirochetes are spiral-shaped bacteria. The leptospirosis classically uh, has an ice pick shape. And the vignette will give you someone who is exposed to like a farm, works on a farm, 
uh, might be around animal urine, okay? And the patient could have a fever, hepatomegaly, increased LFTs, pancytopenia. The presentation is variable. It's pretty much just like animal urine and knowing that it's a spirochete and that it's ice pick shaped. Those are kind of the details that are sufficient for you to get leptospirosis as a correct answer on the USMLA, okay? I mean, for this question, this is what they're gonna ask. They're gonna show you Lyme disease. You're like, that's easy, okay? But it's a spirochete Lyme disease. And then you say, well, which one is a spirochete here? It's leptospira enterogens, okay? So leptospirosis. Pityriasis rosea, this is a very high yield one. Uh, this is caused, this is a Christmas tree rash starting from a herald patch. Herald patch is a two, ish centimeter pink ellipse often on the trunk or back and you're going to get a maculopapular rash extend up the back onto the shoulder blades called a Christmas tree distribution. It's caused by human herpes virus 7, sometimes 6, and it's self-limiting and it's often women in their 20s and it can be itchy or non-itchy, okay? But the US really likes to give you this image of pityriasis rosea with the herald patch and it's just a spot diagnosis and the answer will just be pityriasis rosea. Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, this is Rickettsia Rickettsii, and even, despite the name, U.S. Family likes you to know it's classically East Coast, like um, uh, Connecticut, okay, Massachusetts, but they're going to give you a, a centripetal rash, so it's not necessarily going to be the palms and soles. Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, high yield for palm, one of the palms and soles rashes, uh, in, ad in addition to secondary syphilis or Coxsackie A, um, but you need to know that it's centripetal, meaning it starts distally on the limbs and moves inward. NBME questions have had a proclivity for having Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever presenting as wrists and ankles. It's like, oh shit, like it's not palms and soles, right? So wrists and ankles and it will move in toward the trunk. And we treat this with doxycycline, okay? There's a lot I can go into as far as farm is concerned, but that's actually one of the highest yield points about Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. Okay, like they want you to know it's doxycycline and we don't give doxy to kids eight or younger or to pregnant women. Then we give them moxicillin, same as Lyme disease. Okay, so uh, in this kid, the treatment would be doxycycline. If he's eight or younger, answer is amoxicillin on the USMLA. Um, but Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever is not spread by Exodes tick, it's spread by Dermacenter wood tick. Okay, and Tinea versicolor, this is a fungal infection caused by Malassezia furfur. This is going to present as hypopigmented areas on the shoulders. And this is treated with topical selenium. That treatment is very high yield, okay? They'll just they'll describe this, as I just said, hypopigmented areas, but they want you to know that the reason you have the hypopigmentation is degradation. The fungus causes degradation of fatty acids in the skin, okay? It's obscure but it's known to be a mechanism related to degradation of fat in the skin. So uh, that's essentially the take home for this question, okay? There's, there's so much we can discuss, uh, but I want you to know that you're not necessarily gonna see a, tar a straight up target rash for Lyme disease. It can just be this circular rash. You can often get a picture of a Bell palsy alongside it. You need to know that the spirochetes, uh, Borrelia burgdorferi, there's Borrelia recurrentis, which is similar, causes recurrent fever. And then of course, as we said, we had the leptospira interrogans, animal urine, working on a farm, ice pick shaped, and then we had syphilis, okay? So, um, okay, that's it. I mean, I can just make a long meandering clip, uh, but this, we'll just keep this somewhat concise, okay? So I'll make more content, you know the deal. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.